Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question delete node in a binary search tree. All right, so in this question, we're given a root node reference of a BST and a key. Delete the node with the given key in the binary search tree. Return the root node reference, possibly updated, of the binary search tree. Basically, the deletion can be divided into two stages. So first, we search for a node to remove, and if the node is found, delete the node. Okay, and uh, let's just look at an example. So we have this binary search tree over here, and we'll go over the properties and what the, a BST actually is in a second. Okay, and we're given a key of three, so we want to remove three. So let's say we so we delete three, and we need to rearrange it. So we need to rearrange our tree in such a way that it still uh, follows the principles or the rules of what a binary search tree is. So in this case, uh, we could either rearrange it like this or we could rearrange it like this. And we'll go into more detail um, right now. All right, so let's just uh, look at our same example. So we have five, three, six, two, four, seven. So this is the same as our uh, example, right? And what exactly is a binary search tree? Well, in simple words, it's a tree. Uh, it's a tree-based data structure. And in that data structure, given a root, so in this case, five, let's say five is the root, whatever is to the left of it, so everything, it's left child and everything below, is smaller than the number five. So in this case, three is smaller than five. And everything to the right, so the right child is greater than whatever the root is. So in this case, six is greater than five, three is less than five. Okay, so let's say we go to three over here. The right child of three has a value of four, which is well greater than three. And the left child of three has a value of two, which is well smaller than two. So what we want to do is we're going to be given a, a key. We want to remove that and we want to rearrange our binary tree in such a way that it still holds the properties of a binary search tree. So over here, we have three different cases. So let's start off from easiest to a little bit more complicated. So our easiest case is going to be when we're removing a leaf, a leaflet, leaf, whatever it is. But what a leaf is in a binary tree is an element which does not have any further children. So in this case, two, four, and seven are all leaves. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's say we want to remove seven. So seven is the number that we want to remove. And how can we do that? Well, that's pretty simple. We can just remove this all together and nothing's gonna change. We're still, all that's gonna happen is six instead of uh, the next, uh, the right child of six being seven is just going to change to none. And uh, nothing's going to change because in this case, when we remove a leaf, it's still going to hold its binary search property. So if it's a leaf, you just remove it and we're done at the end. Um, the same way, if we want to remove the val value of four, we just remove it and we still hold the same binary tree, uh, binary search tree um, rules or conditions. And same thing for four. So that's our first condition, pretty simple. Uh, that's when we're given a leaf. Now, our second condition is when we have one child. So this one child can be either a left child or a right child. So over here, it gets a little bit different. So when you have only one child, so uh, let's say, uh, what is the example? So in this case, we only have one element which has one child. So that's the value six. So let's say we want to remove six over here. So how could we actually remove six? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of delete six and five actually, the right child of five is six. So instead, all we're gonna do is we're gonna make it point to the child of six. In this case, six only has one child. So we're just gonna point to whatever that child is. So let's say in this case, seven is the right child. So we're going to end up pointing it to seven. So our binary search three is now gonna be five, three, and then so this is gonna stay the same. And over here, instead of pointing to six, it's going to point to seven and it's still going to follow the conditions of a binary search tree. And yeah, so when you have one child, that's all we're going to do. We're going to delete that child and we're going to make its root to point to the child of what we're deleting. So in this case, five points to seven and whatever its child is. So that's pretty simple. And where it gets complicated is when we have two children. So this is the one condition that we need to uh, look at. So let's see what happens. Okay, so over here, uh, we have two things which have two children, right? So the value three has two children, two and four, and five also has two children. So it has this subtree and this subtree over here. So those are the two. Uh, so what we're going to do for this example 
is let's try to get rid of the value 5. So we want to get rid of 5 and the first step is to well remove 5 and then after we remove 5 we want to rearrange our binary tree such that it follows the conditions of what makes a binary search tree. So how can we do that? Well there's one of two things we could do. Let's look at the first option. So we go to the root, so in this case we want to remove 5 and we're going to look at its right child. So this is over here, it's its right child. And one thing you need to notice is, and our goal over here is we want to find the smallest element in the uh, right child and we want to replace that value with what we want to delete. So what do I mean by that? So in this case, the smallest value in our right subchild, or subtree, sorry, is the value 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this and we're going to replace it with the value of 6. Okay, and how does this actually make sense or actually why does this make sense? Well, the answer is pretty simple. So over here, when you find, so in our right subtree, once you find a minimum value, whatever that minimum value is, it is never going to have a left child because a left child means that this value is smaller than the root whatever is over here. So when you find a minimum value, it is never going to have anything smaller than that. There's no left child for it. If anything, it's going to have a right child or it could be a leaf. So that using that rule, we know for a fact that it only has one child or lesser. So we already know how to deal with if it's a leaf or if it's one child. So that's pretty simple. And we're just gonna use that same formula in this case. So again, let's just run through this. So we find the smallest value in our right subtree, which is the number six. We go to five and we change that to the number six. And now we wanna delete this uh, value of six. And this value of six or whatever the minimum value is, is only going to have one child, which is the right child, or it's not going to have any children. In that case, it's a leaf. So now we're gonna delete this over here, the value six. And how do we do that? Well, pretty simple. So we're just gonna get rid of this and six is going to end up pointing to seven. So let's just draw out how this looks like. So six, three, two, and four, and this ends up becoming seven. And if you see, this still follows the rules that we were talking about. So um, if you look at six to the right, seven is greater than six. To the left, three is less than six. And over here, four is greater than three, and two is less than three. So everything still follows the conditions of a binary search tree. And just to kind of mention uh, one more thing that we could be doing is instead of taking the minimum of the right subtree, we could also take the maximum of the left subtree and do the same steps. So in this case, what's the maximum of the left subtree? So it's four. So we're gonna replace the five. Instead of six, we're gonna replace it with four. And then we're gonna end up deleting four. So in this case, four is a leaf, so we can just get rid of it pretty simply. Okay, so how is this going to look like? Well, we're going to have four. Then after that, we're going to have three over here. Then we're going to have two over here. And after that over here, the six still remains and the seven still remains. And as you can see, everything still follows the property of our binary search tree. So six is greater than four, seven is greater than six, three is less than four, and two is less than three. So everything is perfect. Everything does follow how our binary search tree should be looking like. And yeah, so either of those two methods work. You either go to the right and find the minimum and get rid of that, or you go to the left and find the maximum and then get rid of that. So yeah, that's how we're gonna uh, take care when we have two children for whatever we want to delete. So now what we're gonna do is let's try to see how we can write this in code. All right, so let's start off with our code. And I just wanna mention that our tree node class is already predefined for us. So it's already over here. And all we're doing is we're taking the information we took from that whiteboard and we're just transferring it over here. All right, so we're gonna start off with our delete node uh, function. And over here, we're first gonna check if the root exists. So if not root, then in that case, we're just gonna return the root. So in that case, the root has no value. Okay, and after that, we have another condition. So we'll do an else if. And over here, we're gonna check if the key is less than the value of our root. So if it's less than the value of our root, and just to say uh, we're getting the key from here and the key is an integer. So if the key is less than the value of the root, so when something is less than, it's gonna be to the left, according to your binary search tree, everything on the left child is less than. So that's what's happening over here. So we're gonna go less than. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the left uh, child, so root.left, and we're going to call our delete node function on it. So over here, delete node, and we're going to give it, uh, sorry, we're going to give it this root, so root.left, and the value we're looking for is still going to be the same, so it's just going to be the key. And now we're uh, going to, so, so this is for the case where our key is smaller than our root, and now we're going to check if our key is bigger than our root. So I'm just going to copy this over here, and instead of less than, we're going to check if it's greater than the root, and in that case, it's going to be to the right. So what we're going to do is we're going to change both of these values. Instead of left, it's going to end up being right. Okay, And uh, finally, we have one last condition. So this condition over here is when we have when we have found the key, so whatever the value of our root is, is equal to the value of our key. So in that case, we're going to go inside of this if loop. And over here, we're going to have the same three conditions we did in, um, when we drew this out. So we're going to check if it's a leaf, we're going to check if it has one child, or if it has two children. All right. Okay, so let's start off uh, by the, with one of the first conditions. So we're going to check if it has no children. So if not, sorry, if not root.left and not root.right, so it has no children over here. And in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to change the value of our root to none and we're done. Okay, so that's when we have only, we have no children and it's a leaf. So now let's go to the condition of when we have two children. So let's just write this down. So this is for leaf. And this over here is going to be for one child, sorry, not two children, sorry, one child. And in one child, we have two conditions. We can either have a left root or we can have a right root. So let's just look at both of them. And it's just going to be the same thing. So else if, uh, so if our root uh, dot left does not exist, that means that the root dot right exists. So what we can do is we're going to change our root and our root is now going to just become root dot right. Pretty simple. And the second condition is, so in this condition, we're saying that the root.write does exist. And now in this condition, what we're going to say is we're going to say root.write does not exist, but root.left does exist. So if that's the case, we're going to change the root to root.left instead of root.write. Okay, and now finally, in this uh, else condition over here, so let's just, okay, so in this else condition over here, we're not, we're going to have two children. So the left note left child and the right child both exist. Okay, so over here, we're going to call a function. So we need to have some sort of way to find whatever the minimum value is. So I'm going to store that in a temporary value uh, variable. And let's make a function, but let's just call it first. So I'll call this function find min, and we're going to give it root dot right. So we want to find the minimum value of the right subtree. So we're going to give it root dot right. And and we just want to find the minimum value. So let's go back up over here and let's define that function we're talking about. Okay, so over here, our function is called find min and we're going to give it self and we're also going to give it the root. Okay, so now that we have this, we need to find the smallest, uh, we need to find the minimum value. And how can we find the minimum value? So all we're going to do is going to be pretty simple. Each time we're going to go to the left uh, subtree, left child. So we're going to keep going to the left child until we reach the very ending. And the reason we keep going to the left is because whatever is to the left is smaller than the root. So that's why we're going to keep going to the left until the nothing else exists. So we're going to store this in a temporary variable called current. And this is going to be equal to our root. And what we're going to do is while current.left exists, so while current.left exists, then in that case, we're going to keep going inside of this while loop. And each time we're going to change the value of current to current.left. And we're going to ex exit out of this while loop once we've reached the very ending and it does not have any left children. And in that case, we're just going to end up returning current. So this is going to find uh, the minimum value of the right subtree. Okay, and we're storing that inside of this temporary variable over here. All right, so now that we have that value, what we're going to do is we're going to go to root.val. And we're going to change the value of our root to this temporary value. So temp.val. Okay. And after we changed it, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, delete this value. So what, I'm, what do I mean by that? So we're going to change. So root.write, what's going to happen is we're going to call this delete function on itself. So what's the function called? Delete node. 
So delete node. And what are we going to call this function on? So we're going to call this function on root dot write. So we're going to call it on root dot write. And what do we want to get deleted? So what we did is we changed our root dot val to temp dot val. And there's going to be a repetition of that value. So we want to remove that value from our subtree. And so that's what we're going to end up removing. So temp dot val. And that should be it. So after this, let's go outside of our if and else conditions, and we're going to end up returning our root. And yeah, so now let's submit our solution and we'll see what happens. Okay. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. Do let me know if you have any questions or if there's any lead code questions that you want me to solve. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thank you.